going on here for Heroes of New Earth. We got the round of 32 that we are covering right now. Now the winner of this best of the three series will qualify for the group stages, which is set to start tomorrow. So a lot is on the line. Again, a lot of money in that $5,000 prize pool. A lot of fun with this format. Starts with these qualifiers today, goes in the group stage tomorrow and the next weekend, and then all the way until the final eight teams. We'll be battling it out for that prize pool. So looking forward to casting and covering all throughout this event. Cannot wait. It's kind of being treated as the quote-unquote warm-up tournament for DreamHack, which is definitely just around the corner as well. I can't even believe that still. But yeah. anyway, so we got Less C1K. He's going to claim milk. It's, yeah, it's, what is it? Uh, we leave the, I think I leave like the 15th. So yeah, pretty much two weeks, less than two weeks. Wow. It is just creeping up, man. It is. It really That's is. But, uh, so clam milk versus C1K, though. Again, clam milk up one game to nothing. Looking forward to seeing how this finishes up. Uh, what about you, Ziri? How you doing, buddy? I'm doing very well. Of course, that first game, a very convincing win for Clan Milk. So hopefully C1K will be a little bit more prepared for the laning phase. As we saw in that last match at the very end, it seemed they really did have some solid team synergy, a lot of initiation power. Um, you know, you could probably argue Clan Milk was playing a little bit hyper-aggressive at that point, given their huge lead. But uh, it was just really unfortunate to see C1K fall so far behind so quickly. As we've said many a time in the past, um, yeah, that laning phase is really the first checkpoint. So if yeah. you don't meet that, then the rest of the game is kind of useless. So hopefully, um, you know, they, they don't struggle quite so much against a torture blacksmith lane in this match. <laughs> yeah, it's, <laughs> that is a deadly lane. I mean, that to, yeah, that to, it definitely is. Not to make fun of it too much. I mean, it really is double stun, obviously, and that, that flaming yeah. hammer does amplify the damage of both of their abilities if he gets it on first two, of course. So, yeah, um, it's, yeah. It's rough. It, uh, it proved to be rough for the plague rider could through the fun as we saw in the last game. But yeah, this time around, I'm I definitely hoping just like you know to see something different from here from C1K uh, as of course the first game 16, 17 minute can see. Not too usually a fan of us seeing those quick victories there. But here we are in game number two. Obviously, picks are starting to happen now. Let's start with the bands as we always do. We are looking at Magebane, Ophelia, Tempest, Pebbles, Tundra, Cthulhu Font, Magmus, and Moraxis there. So, uh, looking at the bands, nothing too crazy. Again, just like last game, we do see the Pebbles ban. Not a hero we see all too often, but uh, once again, banned here by C1K. Just making a point that we at least don't want you to li let you have him, especially with how aggressive they played last game. It's not a hero to, uh, that you want to be giving up, but other than that, again, nothing too crazy. Nope, uh, not not too much. Of course, Parasite left over on the board. Uh, one of the few junglers here, keep the forest on the board as well. We see Parasite's been picked up by C1K already. Uh, it's sort of interesting to see Demented Shaman kind of first picked, uh, or in that first round of picks from C1K. As we talked about Demented Shaman in that last match and how he's been nerfed, and we haven't been seeing him picked up nearly as much in that last game. He yeah. wasn't picked, and he was still on the board at the end. So interesting how C1K... Uh, opting for him instead of Plague Rider here, and we'll see how that works. I mean, Demented Shaman is still a very powerful hero, but uh, I guess sort of uh, per usual, whenever yeah. there's a relatively large nerf, there's that kind of knee-jerk reaction where everyone's like, all right, he's, he's garbage, throw him in the dumpster, I'm done, um, as, as it sort of seems to be. But uh, I'm glad we're going to get to see him in this game, um, just mm -hmm. to observe the changes. Exactly, to perhaps get an idea, if anything, if, you know, how big of an impact that had, but uh, you definitely, this will be a very small scale, of course, but at least the beginning. Uh, but I, I, I do think, it, and I actually remember bringing this up to Doc Guys when I heard that change. That was one of the changes that I did, it was aware of <laughs> going into this patch, and I was like, what are you doing, Doc Kaiser? No, but uh, what do I know? I'm not, I suck at this game anyways, but. Um, I suck at this game, but I love Demented Shaman. <laughs> uh, I love Demented Shaman, exactly. And, uh, that, uh, it, you know, when you look at the numbers, going from a 15-second cooldown to a 45-second cooldown, <laughs> that's quite the change, so. Of course, it does decrease, but kind of a big deal. But anyways, yeah, that's a little bit of a risky pick, you could argue, because of that change. But hey, they get that out of the way with the Parasite pick. Now, this gets uh, Clan Milk Fade, Engineer, and Glacius. So Clan Milk also looking a little bit uh, different here. Um, Engineer has been a hero we've seen a couple times lately. I think Noodle was actually a player that comes to mind uh, playing him recently. So, hmm. for, for Clan Milk, actually. And that was uh, kind of fun to see. But, um, yeah. How about the Clan Milk's lineup over there? Oh yeah, Fade Engineer as their second round of picks. Both of those, in my mind, are kind of wild cards. I mean, why bother picking them up that early on? It's not like those are two heroes that are really in high demand, but I, I'm my jaw is on the floor <laughs> breaking. I'm AFK picking that. Gladiator Devourer. No big deal. I, I mean... New meta? Yeah. What? <laughs> no, no, no. Let's not get too ahead of ourselves. I mean, what is what is this? All four. The only normal pick here is Glacius. Every other hero on this board, I yeah. would have never predicted. 
No, yeah, it's, I think it's definitely a case of clam milk saying, you know what, we had a, we had a fairly easy time that first game. We were, let's have some fun. Let's, we know we're on Honcast, and, uh, uh, again, Milk Fat is definitely a guy. He, he, he loves attention, that's although true. that's a bad thing, but he loves attention. You know, he's a, he's a fun character. And, uh, you know, when he, when he happens to be on Honcast, he, he does uh, like to – like to please the viewers as well, you could say. So. Yeah. Well, I I can definitely vouch for that and say a big thank you to Milk Fat here. At least at the very least, we're going to see some interesting plays. I mean, we've seen Devourer a time or two, but Gladiator. Yeah. I mean, I don't think I've ever seen him. I, I mean, it's that that for me is really the standout pick. Just like wow, yeah. what are you going to do with him? Are they just going to lane him with Glacius and play him kind of like a carry, just try and get him as kind of free form style? I mean. It, on top of that, how are they going to lane this? They've got four melee heroes. Let's talk about some Honcast history here. <laughs> uh, no, yeah, it's uh, again. This kind of goes back to the trial and era of where Fnatic MSI specifically, but other teams tried to follow in their stats. But really, Fnatic MSI was the dominant. Where Gladiator trial lane was, it was unstoppable. It was literally unstoppable when Fnatic MSI played it, just because they played it so well, and you know, no one, no one could find a way to play against it. It was, it was pretty crazy actually. But um, so, with that said, I wouldn't be surprised if that's Clan Milk here, you know, trying to maybe bring some of that trial lane back. I wouldn't be surprised to see a Gladiator Glacius Engineer lane here as a trial lane. But also another great thing about Gladiator, you know, you get him. The usual build is really. Uh, Helm of the Black Legion into Assassin Shroud, and then the Rift Shards after, if I'm not mistaken. I think that, that's what's in the top of my head. I believe that's how the usual order that it went. Um, but yeah, so he just gets pretty massive, and uh, it, the Assassin Shroud alone is ridiculous with that flagellation of his, uh, if he gets the crit. So yeah, yeah. it's pretty pretty crazy, crazy freaking damage um, that, that he can do. That is definitely, and that's kind of the build that comes to mind as well. And it's it's good. It just takes a long time to farm. It's yeah. one of those kind of, one of those heroes, I, I guess, where he becomes really powerful once he gets those core items. But I've tried to do that a time or two. I, I think I I got killed by a tricked out gladiator one time that got like a 10k crit and the annihilation, the whole big shebang that's all over YouTube. And it happened to me once. I was like, all right, gladiator's the best hero in the game. I'm playing him. It's it's not that easy, man. Gladiator is so hard to play with Showdown and Pitfall, both. I mean, even his ultimate, three kind of skill shot abilities almost. And I mean, Showdown's not really a skill shot, I guess, but it's sort of hard to use effectively, at least in my opinion. I don't know. He's he's an interesting hero in my mind. I think of him kind of like Tundra, really high skill cap. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. He definitely is. His landing that Pitfall can be very difficult. You know, getting a good ultimate off. Uh, because the timing of it and the placement of it can be difficult as well uh, when it comes to some of those team fights. So um, I, I agree with you. He, he definitely has one of the higher skill caps in the game. I definitely think it's safe to say. Um, now, uh, the funny thing is, of course, you know, here I am talking about the whole tri-lane gladiator. But sure enough, they're actually going to be running a solo <laughs> gladiator in the middle lane. So doing the, the classic 2-1-2 setup here. As it is going to be the Engineer Fate top, Gladiator middle, and Devour Glacius bottom. That That's a dangerous lane, by the way. I mean, he got that free set up for an easy hook. Uh, that could just yeah. guarantee kills all over the place. So, um, yeah, that's that's quite quite dangerous for this bottom lane match, if whoever it may be. It looks like it may be Bubbles here. But anyways, Hellborn team, Armadon, Parasite, Bubbles, Demented Shaman, and Pharaoh. So, honestly, a pretty solid team. I think they actually did a pretty good job of drafting this team. You know, when you look at it firsthand... Lanes look very good. I mean, yeah. I think it's actually a pretty solid lineup here. Yeah, I, I like it. I, I mean, of course, Glenn Milk's team is a little bit more out there. But, um, no, C1K definitely has a pretty straightforward team. Uh, Bubble's going to be in the suicide here. Solo Pharaoh going to be going toe-to-toe -to -toe against the Solo Gladiator, which would be kind of interesting to see. Um, and, yeah, they have good lanes. Like, like you said, Demented Shaman Armadon going together is definitely a powerful lane that should fare nicely against the uh, Engineer Fade combo, which is sort of an interesting lane as well. I'm kind of curious uh, and exactly how this is going to work. There is definitely some double stun potential. Of course, Keg as a, a follow-up stun, of, of course, makes it a little bit easier, but uh, should be interesting nonetheless. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's very true. Uh, you know, I kind of when I was going over the, the the lanes there, I kind of thought to myself like didn't really address it too much, but yeah, the engineer failure like, that is a uh, pretty odd, pretty odd lane to see, but. At the same time, again, I am excited to see Engineer, but it is being played by Mookies here. Again, we talked about Noodles, actually. He had, he had some pretty impressive performances with him recently uh, when he was playing it for Clan Milk, I believe, against Trademark Esports. So we see right here, Demented Shaman actually going to take a little bit of pressure. Should end up surviving, but a lot of early pressure onto him. And will force him to use an early health potion. So actually uh, working out pretty well right there 
for the uh -huh. Legion team, despite not getting the kill. And you see, once again, going on to him, they're going to miss the Fade Sun right there with the Burning Shadows. But they're making a statement that uh, that Demented Shaman's not going to have an easy time up here at this top lane. Yeah, this the one, another one of these situations where, yeah, Armadon may farm okay up here, but uh, I think they're going to pick on Demented Shaman. And this is going to be so rough for uh, Kahlbergs here. He's going to have to be very, very spot on with his positioning for sure. Because uh, you know that they're going to capitalize on any misstep that he makes. See down here in the bottom lane, uh, Bubbles, probably the hero best suited to deal with this Glacius Devo lane, as you noted, is particularly potent, but that Shell Surf does change the state of things a little bit. Um, unfortunately for Bubbles, though, I mean, EU bro, not even in experience range right now, just going to hide in the trees and try and leech a little bit XP, a little bit of XP. But this will be interesting to see pretty much a free farming devourer. You know, what's Milk yeah. Pack going to do with all that farm? And is that going to be worthwhile? You know, is that farm on Devourer really going to be great? Or, you know, maybe should they try and rotate this and bring Gladiator down here for that free farm? Um, kind of an interesting thing to, to uh, consider. Well, yeah, we definitely talked about the other day. I believe uh, Phil happened to be casting me with, with me when, again, Devourer, another hero that Clam Milk, Moravius actually picked up for them recently. Um, again, no longer with the team, but from my understanding at least. But anyways, he is being played here by, uh, by Milk Fat, of course. But... Um, but the question of, you know, whether or not he gets that third ability, that Cadaver Armor at level 4, or if he doesn't get it at level 4, usually he'd be at the level 9 mark, is how he put it. And that, that basically, it depends on how you expect him to play. Meanwhile, the top lane, by the way, Blood Dust Coat coming out, no big deal. I was like, he's like, just catch the tail end of that. Uh, we see the Fade uh, Engineer combination actually doing enough damage to take him out. And as we say, you know, the pressure being applied early on already this game, not really big surprise to see that happening. But um, are we going to see Devourer roaming around? As a result of getting that cadaver armor, or are we just going to see him sit in the lane static farming, and so he's not going to get the cadaver armor? I think it's going to be the latter. I think he's going to going to sit in this lane, so I wouldn't be surprised if he passes up on that cadaver armor uh, mm -hmm. for now and just uh, kind of just focus on sitting in this lane and amplifying his farm. As you said, he's getting 100% free farm easily at this bottom lane. But and the next question is, you know, how much impact impact is that actually going to mean though? Right, exactly, and that, that's part of the problem here, but we'll see, you know, I, I'm not an expert in Devourer by any means, because we really don't see him too frequently, but he seems to be one of those heroes that has a very, um, very important balancing act of how much to roam and how much to static farm, because it's very easy to roam too much and just become underfarmed and kind of useless, and on the same token, it's very easy to just static farm and spend way too much time not building up charges with that cadaver armor, uh, when you could be roaming around picking up relatively easy kills, so it's finding that balance uh, looking for those opportunities to port and uh, get some of that bonus strength. Um, so we'll see. I'm sure Milkfat will find that balance. At least for now, this bottom lane is working very, very nicely. And uh, they're keeping Bubbles totally under farmed. He's sitting at 95 GPM right now, XP oh. per minute. Um, you know, he's not really doing so well either. That hook, uh, pretty close to connecting with Bubbles there, who, of course, does not have enough mana for the Shell Surf. So a nice read from Milkfat. At least throw the hook. Well, that did connect. It's just uh, take cover was used perfect oh, timing oh, by uh, EU Pro right there. So that was actually just gr better reaction even on uh, Bubbles' part. But yeah, that, for um, some reason it, I thought it was one of those like it was gonna miss. I, I, yeah, no, it was. It was very very <laughs> close. I happened to just be like focusing on that though. So. Uh, yeah, yeah, it was just a good plan on his part, but yeah, still. Uh, Cadaver Armor was picked up at level 4, so... Again, I do wonder if that makes... Is that perhaps makes a mindset of maybe we'll see Milk Fat moving around a little bit earlier on in this game rather than just a static farm in this bottom lane, but... Um, who knows? Who knows? And I guess maybe a bit of that may have to depend on how Gladiator does in this middle lane, because if he isn't, you know, doing the greatest in this middle lane, can adjust to the bottom lane then to pick up his farm that much more where Devour and Glacius start moving. But Gladiator right now, it seems like he's doing pretty well, but he's going to get caught here by Pharaoh. He's going to put down the Pitfall, though, to help him get away with the Hellfire activated, and will be fine. But Pharaoh seems like he's also uh, manning up quite a bit. 17-0 for him compared to that 19-5 Gladiator. Pretty uh, back and forth here in the middle lane. Neither side really taking off too much. They're going to battle for that invisible rune there. Look at the mummy walls. Here's a pitfall going to be used right there, though. Wow. And that did force Pharaoh to turn around. This very smart decision, because if he kept on trying to chase for it, obviously he saw Devour coming over, and that would have been a guaranteed kill. So good play exactly. by Pharaoh there. It seems pretty even in mid. You know, Pharaoh Gladiator going toe-to-toe -to -toe is definitely interesting. In the top, Demented Shaman going to be in some trouble. There's that Fade Engineer combo. The Unbreakable's been used. The heals have come out. Is Demented Shaman going to be able to survive this? Indeed not. We'll see Engineer be the one to pick up that kill. Unfortunately, Fade, or fortunately, for, I guess, for the Elborn side, uh, Fade is going to be uh, be able to survive. Armadon not going to be able to get that last Spine Burst to finish her off. But one thing that's interesting about Gladiator is we see him in the mid lane. Actually, in a little bit of trouble as Parasite roams in. He is going to be able to eat that Invis rune and survive, but a pretty close call here for Cookies on that level 5 Gladiator. Um, but, you know, his uh, passive, the flag, 
flagellation. Is that right? Flagellation. Yeah, flagellation. Yeah. Flagellation. Yeah, that's, that's a weird a, name. It's a crazy word. Whip. Um, Easier. Oh. Oh, up in the top, Demented Shaman, or it's not Demented Shaman, Armadon going to fall, the Congor Taunt coming down, so Clan Milk still doing very well in that top lane. Um, anyway, that Flagellation is true damage, so someone I saw yeah. in chat brought up, you know, against Armadon, that could be a pretty powerful tool, especially once you get some farm on him, and that is definitely one thing to keep in mind, that true. it does do AoE true damage, and there aren't really too many abilities that do true damage, at least that we see in our metagame, so yeah. interesting as this game goes on to see if that has an impact. A uh, very, very good point to bring up, uh, and it didn't, definitely didn't hit me at the beginning, but uh, yeah, of course that whip, as you stated, one of the very few abilities in the game that <clears throat> indeed is true damage, of course, meaning it cannot be resisted, and it is straight up that amount not of damage. Not reduced by armor. Not reduced by armor, yeah. Uh, better way to put it, but yeah, you see the pressure constantly being applied, obviously he has his boost delivered to him now. Glacius was coming here to the middle lane, obviously setting up that kink of the top lane, now headed towards middle, but Pharaoh is going to be a little bit passive about it, and he should be fine for now. That means Devour has been solo a little bit down here, but again, especially with the lead that he has, it's not like he's slowed down by any means. Uh, he just continues to go at it. 33 and 11 right now and counting. Uh, easily the, the top creep score in the game. Back to the middle lane, we do see Glacius taking a little bit of pressure right here. Pitfall comes out, trying to maybe hit Parasite, who's obviously roaming over, setting up something in the middle, but not going to hit and uh, going to be fine. But yeah, Devour leading the way right now, 300 gold per minute. Early ghost marches for him so far, but, you know, still no kills or assists, so... Again, I do wonder, are we going to see Devourers perhaps start moving around, especially now that he has those Ghost Marchers, or continue to static farm the bottom lane? Yeah, that's been the question in the back of my mind. I've also heard, you know, level 6 is really that key thing for Devourer. That's what turns him from a guy that can kind of pick up some kills if someone's out of in a, in a bad position to a guy that can make it happen. Uh, so maybe around that level 7 mark, perhaps, will be his time to shine. We'll see, though. The Ghost Marchers over the Striders. I like the choice. You know, with that extra bit of farm. You can invest in the, in my, in my opinion, the slightly better boots. So that's uh, good to see as well. Not a big fan of Striders, Breaky. Really not a not a big Striders guy. On who? Devour? Just in general. Oh, I don't like it. Uh, yeah, it's... I don't know. I, I for, for support, obviously, it's just... Oh, yeah, Glacius. Speaking of support... He if only is he had some here. Striders. If only! I know, right? Striders wouldn't know. It's definitely wouldn't have done anything there. But. No, they're situational. I mean, they are good on some heroes. Just in general, I'm not a big fan yeah. of the... Uh, you know, I, I like seeing supports go the uh, Steam Boots role. Uh, Steam Boots avenue whenever they have the opportunity. I think to... most of the time that, that is a preferred to. It's, it's really yeah. what it comes down to is, you know, the farm. Obviously, yeah. a 300 gold upgrade for Striders compared to... Um, 950 gold upgrade for Steam Boots, or 1,000 gold upgrade for Ghost Marchers, you know, it's uh, a little bit easier. And when it, it may not sound like a lot, but when you are that pure ward bitch support, such as the Glaciers and whatnot, it definitely comes into play. Meanwhile, the top play, we do see the Engineer Ultimate used right here, but Engineer's dropping, actually. He will get pushed in and end up dying. In the meantime, Armadon goes down, though. Parasite, oh, he is going to take over the creep, though, at the last second. Will be fine. But Demented Shaman wasn't able to save that Armadon. And you know what? Look at that Unbreakable. It uh, it was definitely on cooldown, and I, I think if that change never happened, maybe it would have uh, came off cooldown. No, actually, it was a 30-second cooldown, so maybe not. Maybe I'm uh, overthinking that a little bit too much. But It would have been a close call. It would have been I, very, very close, yeah. There, yeah, there, there's definitely some potential there. I, I wasn't looking quite at the time. 35-second cooldown, it is sitting level 2. Then Again, important to note now, especially in those early levels. It is important to note about Unbreakable, though. Once it hits level 4, it's exactly the same as it used to be. The cooldown yeah. does go back down to 15 seconds at level 4. It's really more of an early game change, more so than a, you know, let's just take Demented Shaman off the map. So that is something to note. And as we see, Demented Shaman not going for Entangle here. Going to be leveling up uh, Unbreakable as his secondary, right behind that uh, healing wave, which is sitting level 3. So... As the game goes on, I suppose we'll see Demented Shaman return to his regular form, but early on, feeling the pain, feeling the burn. Yeah, and uh, you know, again, not, not too surprising for me either to see that Demented Shaman not passing up the entangle, especially with the land that he's in. It's just uh, very defensive-minded, so having that break one healing wave. Uh, can prove to be the, the difference maker, but Pharaoh in the meantime getting ganked, attempted right here. Oh, he'll dodge the ultimate though from Gladiator because he was stuck in the mummy wall. And he ended up getting an invis as well from his invisible rune that he had bottled up. And he lives, so that's a case right there. Gladiator trying to land that ultimate for the kill, not able to happen though. Milk Fabian with the bottom line, getting his ultimate on a bubbles with a devour right there, but no poor coming in from Pharaoh. Fade, they're running in, and Fade will lock up. Oh, about the take cover, not going to matter though. Bubbles will end up falling in the end, but Devour now actually in a lot of trouble. Are we going to see a Pharaoh snipe? There's the Wrath of the Pharaoh to catch him, and Devour will indeed end up falling right there. So, good timing from Pharaoh, actually, and sure, Bubbles died, but hey, he ended up getting a counter kill onto, uh, 
onto that Devour. So not not mm -hmm. too bad in the end right there for Hellbrand team, and some good support, some good play all around there from Pharaoh, especially being played by Archons once again. Yeah, I know you're exactly right. I mean, it was a good play by Fade, as you mentioned, the take cover, just not quite enough to keep Bubbles alive. It's sort of unfortunate Fade wasn't able to do more to support Devo there, but uh, she did what she could, and ended up being a one-for-one -one exchange. Of course, Clan Milk still with a nice lead set for themselves, but this is just a completely different game from the first match we saw 10 minutes in, and it's still relatively even. You know, five to three heroes, or, uh, hero kills, and, uh, you know, looking pretty good. Clan Milk, though, what makes me nervous is this Gladiator is farming so well. I mean, their gold lead is pretty apparent on that GPM char. They've both, uh, all three heroes, I guess, Fade, Gladiator and Devour are all farming above Pharaoh, who's the leading farmer of the Hellborn side. So that is definitely one scary statistic to look at here uh, in the eyes of the Hellborn side. Up in the top, though, Armadon in big trouble. Devour can use that ultimate and uh, able to finish him off with the rot. So well played by Milkpad. He's moving around now. Is he going to have that hookup? He does. He may be able to get this hook onto Parasite. He didn't need to do it soon. Nope. Oh. I was going to say, oh, he got the one with the Parasite. Wow. wow. He actually got the creep with the Parasite in it. And now he's going for him. Uh, I, I don't think he's going to be able to keep him contained. So, oh, he's just going to say, screw it. I'm going to pour it out of here. And, no, oh. it is. Oh. <laughs> no, he did. He lived. Oh, wow. Happened to be another kill at the last second by Pharaoh getting taken on the middle. AC. glad to be able to Holy crap. I cannot believe Paris. I just lived right there. That was perfect timing, too, with the text popped up. Like, oh, my God, he actually died. No, he didn't. I don't know what's going on. Wow, that was uh, some intense stuff right there happening. But in the end, Parasite does make the getaway. But like I said, Pharaoh got picked up in the middle lane. And now Demented Shaman actually in a lot of trouble. Looks like he'll end up surviving, especially because of that Unbreakable. But um, Engineer coming in for the gank. But, yeah, Parasite, man, <laughs> living life on the edge right there. Yeah, that was that was just close all across the board between the hook and then getting the creep that he hopped into. That was just ridiculous, them porting out with probably five hit points to spare or something absurd. Um, I, I was pretty confident that he was actually going to die. So, I, yeah, like you said, living life on the edge. Here you see Pharaoh in a little bit of trouble here. He's going to get the mummy wall off, but uh, Pharaoh or he's just going to get hooked by Devo. Uh, Cake's actually going to get credit for that kill. Bubble's going to come in, though, with the Song of the Sea nuke. Not going to be able to do a hell of a lot, but now Devour in some pretty serious trouble. Armadon's chasing him down, spamming those spines. There's the Snot. Engineer's here, though. There's the Engineer ulti. Barely going to have enough to keep uh, Devour alive. A beautiful keg actually going to push Armadon back into the ult. Armadon going to take a lot of extra damage. Devour did throw that uh, hook. Unfortunately, didn't connect. He's going to use that ult, proving to be a fatal misstep there as Parasite comes in and just finishes him off. Armadon almost going down. A nice keg connecting. Keg's going to be able to pick up that kill. Uh, on to Bubbles, we see Armadon dangerously low, Dimension Shaman with no Unbreakable for another 15 seconds. Fade going to try to get that stun, Burning Shadows will connect, the heal going to come out from Dimension Shaman, and uh, not going to have enough damage to finish off that Armadon as he heads for the well, but oh, in comes Engineer with the beautiful Keg Nuke, at the cost of his own life does finish off that Armadon kill, so Parasite coming out, we have two kills there. Now sitting 2-0-2. Two, two. Yeah, it's an end too badly there for a C1K team, but God, it could have been so much better, but it was just unfortunate timing by Bubbles right there. He poured it in with the Shell Surf right as Fade was lining up a Burning Shadow Stun. He happened to get caught in it and was not able to even get a Kelp Field off, let alone a Song of the Sea Nuke before he died right there. If he was able to get off one of those two, if not both even, that could have really been a dominant fight right there for Call of Karma. Just really unfortunate that he wasn't able to. But yeah, like I said, still in the end, not horrible, but but, I mean, no doubt, you look at the overall stats right now, Clan Milk in the advantage, 4,200 goal lead, 3,400 experience lead, and we are coming up to that 14-minute mark. So it's, I don't think it's like last game necessarily, but it is definitely being won by Legion Team. Nice job with the hook right there from Devour, hooking Pharaoh out of his own mummy walls with Gladiator in the midst of it as well, and uh, happens to get another kill. So things starting to come together, it looks like, for Clan Milk now, pu pushing together as a team. Making some ganks happen, and this is just like last game in that sense where the momentum starts picking up and it becomes very difficult for the opposition right there. Parasite in the meantime, he's going to try to turn this around with the face hug. The Dimension Chop and Unbreakable it doesn't reach him in time. That's a problem with that travel time right there. The Engineer Ultimate even being activated. Once again, Bubbles ports in, he gets the kill field off, but he dies a half a second later. Armadon, the sole survivor, and he may actually end up going down right here. The keg is going to miss, actually. So that could be the saving grace when it's all said and done, but still, so much pressure from Clan Milk right there. Four to the five kills happening. Yeah, that uh, Engineer Ultimate was actually really well placed, and it caught Bubbles right on the edge where he's just taking all of that damage and, uh, of course, silence for most of that duration. So it was good he was able to get the Kelp field off, but really nullified uh, Bubbles just kind of in general throughout that fight. So... You're exactly right. I mean, this game started off a lot more even, but now we're seeing Clan Milk really starting to dominate. In the bottom lane, Gladiator going to get caught by that Wrath of the Pharaoh, and oh my gosh, he may actually be able to wow. survive this. 
30 hit points or so. Is the Pharaoh Snipe going to come? Nope. Cool down for another 5 or 6 seconds. A hasted Gladiator is going to be pretty difficult to snipe out. He's been sipping up the bottle anyhow, and he's back within an acceptable level of HP. So, wow. Talk about a lucky call there for Cookies. Definitely should have been a kill for the Hellborn side. Yeah, that was very, very, very close. But I was going to say, that's the Helm of the Black Legion for you, but no, he didn't even have that. He's just simply <laughs> Ghost Marchers <clears throat> and able to somehow survive. Uh, all of that damage. I wonder right here, does he have something in his stash? Or I guess as far as he's 320 gold per minute, so it seems like he sh should maybe. Yeah, it is. We're only 15 and a half, oh, 60 is. minutes he's in. Got so. the broad sword. Uh, oh wow, stuff. yeah. So he's actually going for the assassin shot first. Um, again, I, I believe it usually used to be more the Helm of the Black Legion first, but uh, maybe it's because of how this game's going, or the Helm of the Black Legion has been through a bit of changes. So. Perhaps that yeah, has to do with perhaps it, a combination of both. I mean, I would imagine this game, they're far enough ahead that it's like, yeah, do I really need the helm? I mean, they're not really killing me anyway. So, uh, in the mid lane, of course, we did just see Archons get taken down by Cakes. Fade now has a Codex, so she's become that uh, super scary hero killer, sitting 8 0 oh, 4 now. Let's see, see minutes into this game. Up in the top, Parasite gonna fall. Demented Shaman coming in. Not even gonna try and get that unbreakable off. This Parasite got dropped pretty damn quick. Bubble's gonna wander into the danger zone. He's gonna get killed by the Gladiator Ultimate, so well placed by Cookies there. And uh, they do pick up uh, three kills now, sort of a three for nil exchange. All kind of 1v3 battles in various locations, but uh, very unfortunate for C1K nonetheless. Yeah, oh, another pitfall gonna be landed right here. The flagellation, uh, or flatulation, wow. whatever you want to call it. Yeah, yeah on top damage. of that. Just look at the damage, yeah. Half Jesus. life just from those uh, two abilities alone right there in a matter of a second, so. Um, yeah, Kuki's starting to really step up on landing some pretty solid pitfalls here. When it comes down to his play, so well played by Cookies. And again, that Assassin Shroud, madam. If, if you think he's hitting hard right now, <laughs> he gets that Assassin Shroud. He comes out of that with the flagellation. It just crits for insanely hard. And there we go. He finishes it right there. So uh, look for Demented Shaman, Bubbles, Parasite. Really, those three especially to be uh, pretty vulnerable now to this Gladiator as he's going to start or continue to play more and more aggressive. So, okay, not... Well, it was not exactly as rapid and as crazy and intense as it was last game for Clan Milk, but still, they have 11,000 golden experience lead right now, and we're only 17 and a half minutes in. So, uh, for C1K, simply put, oh, a nice hook right there on a Demented Shaman. By the way, Hellfire is going to be active. trying to keep him alive. Demented Shaman staying alive for now, but that Codex dude comes out, and down it goes. Devour in the meantime gets caught on the mummy walls, and he may actually fall. The Minotaur Parasite going to help get the kill onto him, so it ends up being a two for one kill right there. As Cakes did pick up the double tap. Parasite chasing this engineer. Feral new ground on top of that. There's the Fistic and the Wrath of the Feral. So quite a bit used. But I want Cost right here. Puts them in poor positioning. Gladiator runs in with 328 crit. Takes out Parasite. And Feral now going to be brought back as a result of that showdown. And uh, will he end up falling as a question? Assassin's Shot coming up in one second. I don't think he has enough mana for it, though. And it doesn't matter. Cakes, another double tap right there. So really uh, picking up four kills in total, I guess. Yeah. Doing work right there. So Clan Milk just even extending the lead that much more. Yeah, it, exactly right. Um, I mean, everyone on their team now is just in really damn good shape, especially this Fade is just going to keep leveling up the Codex. No problem. 12 0 and 5 on Fade right now. Wow. Yeah, wow. They just uh, that's, that's <laughs> definitely something to point out. 12 0 and 5, no big deal. Again, for especially how early we are in, it just gets picked. But. Um, yeah, it's interesting to look at sort of the Pharaoh and Devourer because they both kind of counter each other. As we saw there, the Hellfire, yeah. really, it just totally screws uh, the, the ultimate from uh, Devourer there. And we see, oh, God, look at that damage coming out from Cookies. A beautiful hook on a Demented Shaman. There's the ultimate. And uh, Cookies actually need a double tap. Clan Milk just unrelenting oh. right now. It's ridiculous. It's unfortunate. He didn't actually have enough mana for his Assassin Shroud there. If he had the Assassin Shroud, that would have been just ridiculous damage burst. But... Wow. He did it without an assassin shot. As uh, anyways, though, can see votes called. Obviously, our Hellborn team. You know, they're they're very aware of that. <laughs> Simply put, outmatched here against Clan Milk, and uh, uh, Clan Milk will be the ones moving on though as a result of that. Again, stressing that point. This uh, this will lead them into that group stage format where there's going to be four groups of four teams in each, so 16 total. And the top two from each group going to move on. Each team will play the other one, best of the two series, or just static two game, whatever you want to call it. And uh, the top two records will move on. So I'm looking forward to that. I, I re I'm a huge fan of group stages whenever we get the opportunity to, to do those. So, Yeah, definitely true. So, yeah, we see some more kills coming out here. Cakes uh, loses his bloodbath, unfortunately. But, but the point about uh, Devo and Pharaoh is making, even though Pharaoh can interrupt him with the Hellfire, 
Uh, Debo, we've seen a few times, hook Pharaoh out of his mummies, which kind of defeats the purpose of the mummies in the first point. So uh, they sort of both counter each other in different ways, and it's just interesting how that mechanic works out when they're on uh, yeah. op opposing teams. It's not something we see too frequently, so yeah. that's sort of interesting. <laughs> yeah. We see right there the hook completely missing. Try to pull them into the mines. Yeah. Uh, not going to work, though. So, again, Clan Milk just really just having fun with this. I think uh, Gladiator is just going to even attempt to go right into straight into Rift Shards as well. Uh, if he has enough time for uh, it, but um, another point on that, by the way. So first off, um, tomorrow. So tomorrow, that's so okay. One, one point to make is I know I, I didn't notice some people coming tuning in. It's like, wait, where's the It's Goes to Finals? Um, it's Goes to Invitational Finals. That's actually tomorrow. It actually got pushed back to tomorrow because of this event, I believe. Even yeah, well, uh, was starting today, but yeah. When I scheduled it, I was looking at this event, and for some reason, I thought this was going to take a lot longer. I, I by no means thought this was going to be done at three o'clock. Yeah. So I, we probably could have just done it today and said, okay, as soon as this tournament's done, we'll start at three thirty or four. But I thought this was going to go to like six or something. I don't know yeah. why. Maybe I misread how many rounds were going to happen, or I just didn't do the math. I, I don't know what happened, Breaky, but. Kind of uh, failed on that a little bit. So it's tentatively scheduled for tomorrow, and I think it's going to be even more difficult to get it in between the group stages. So yeah, hoping well, for it tomorrow. Yeah, but, it is unfortunate, but hey, yeah. hopefully it's not too big of an issue. Kind of my bad um, there is the, the main admin in that one. <laughs> by the way, who are the teams in the finals? Uh, it is uh, Trademark Esports going up against Team It's Gosu, I believe. Nice, uh, nice. can actually double check real quickly. Yeah, we had to use different brackets. Uh, yeah, Team It's Ghostly versus TDM. So, should be good. Both teams 2-0 uh, their way to the finals. So, pretty wow. uh, pretty awesome. Well, actually, no, I, I guess I, I shouldn't say that. Team It's Ghostly 2-1 Black Fade in the round of eight. Okay. Um, but they did 2-0 Frey or slash TT Esports in the semis. And uh, there was one upset, though. Actually, A-Man 2-1 uh, Fnatic Raid Call in the round of eight, which was kind of, uh, kind of an upset. Oh wow! Congratulations to them. Yeah. Um, they did get two would by TDM though in the semis. So yeah. <laughs> it's a so. high life, dude. Like a. Aww. Yeah. Aww. But. Um, so, but oh. again, you guys are covering that tomorrow, right? You and Sneaky. Hopefully, at, uh... yes. That's that's the plan. Okay. Um, either before, or after the, uh, the this the group stages of this, we kind of I guess we'll have to get with the teams and figure out what they want to do. But uh. So, well, the other note I wanted to make on that, too, though, of course, with tomorrow, as you kept on stressing, the group stages will start tomorrow. It's uh, scheduled to start tomorrow, at least, uh, for the first two uh, series. So, two best set of twos, or against Static 2, whatever you want to call them, uh, matches will happen. The third game for each of the groups will actually happen the next weekend. But um, tomorrow, an hour before the group stages start, they're set to start at 1 p.m. Eastern. That's 10 a.m. Pacific, 1900 Central European time. We're actually going to have a live drawings of the group stages and how they're going to play out. So um, after today, we we have t we have four top-seeded teams. I believe that's Trademark Esports, TT Esports, not known, or formerly known as Frenetic Array, of course, but not known as TT Esports, Blackfade.org, and Fnatic Raycall are the top four teams. So uh, they will get the, the they will each be placed in individual groups, but we're gonna randomly draw the next 12 teams to see who gets placed in what groups. So we're gonna have some fun with that, and uh, you know that's always that uh, brings the suspense, and you know you get some discussion out of it and whatnot. So um, definitely, definitely, definitely look forward to that an hour before the matches start, which so that means it would be at 9 a.m. Pacific, 12 noon, which is uh, 1800 Central European time. So, but yep. And uh, another thing to note as well, in the brackets, ILX is Fnatic Raid Call. There's still, yeah. whatever the issue is that CSN can't seem to solve with changing that team name, that is Fnatic Raid Call. So when you look in the brackets, you're like, I don't see Fnatic, ILX is what you should be looking for. Yeah. Just, I've made that mistake several times, so I'm just going to voice that, right? <laughs> that is unfortunate. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I too, I have no clue why that is so difficult I, to change, but hey. I don't know. Apparently it is, because it still hasn't hit, but... Um, well, that uh, that 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 does it for today. Kind of, uh, I know an anticlimactic finish, I guess. Uh, maybe hoping for a little bit more, but yeah, I, I I was unaware too, just like you. Actually, I thought there was actually a little more planned for today, but uh, I I think in my mind I was imagining 128 teams coming yeah. out instead of a round of 64. So that would have been an additional round to slow things down. Um, I think that was my first thought. I thought, you know, given that this is a completely open tournament worldwide, internet. Well, I guess it's for the international client. Uh, we'd get more than 64 teams out. So mm -hmm. that was a little bit surprising, I guess, to see. Maybe they had, like, 70 and just limited it to 64. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure exactly how that worked either. But... I, I don't know how they did it, but, yeah. Well, 
T to say the least, though, I mean, again, tomorrow or today, you know, may not be the, the most exciting and whatnot, but tomorrow, that's that's where things definitely will be exciting. I can guarantee that, both uh, from from Honkast side and, of course, your guys' side. I mean, the big TDM versus uh, Team It's Goes To, as you said, for the for the yeah. It's Goes To Invitational Finals for the month of May. You guys are going to be covering that on your stream, and I, I personally am looking forward to that. If I wasn't casting, you know, <laughs> I would definitely be tuning in, so... Yeah, um, yeah that, that's exciting too. So uh, plenty of coverage tomorrow, guys, for Heroes and New Earth Competitive, Heroes and New Earth in general. Uh, lots on the line, and it, it, it's a hell of a day tomorrow. So I'm looking forward to that. But yeah. um, as far as today goes, again, I think uh, that should uh, that should look to wrap it up. So any final words you want to give here, Ziori, before uh, moving on? Not, not really. Uh, like you said, uh, big stuff coming up tomorrow, the rest of the weekend. Uh, Dreamhack coming up soon. It's nice outside. Maybe do a little bit of grilling today, you know, now that we're done a little early. Yeah. Sky's the limit. Get some of that vitamin D. I don't know. I don't have too much breaky. It's, all right. A uh, couple quick games. GG. That's it. That's all I got. <laughs> sounds good. Sounds good. All right. So tomorrow, guys, uh, again, as far as Honcast goes, 9 a.m. Pacific, 12 noon Eastern, 1800 Central European time. We're going to be doing the, the drawings. Or at least that's the idea. We're going to do the drawings live on stream. As far as uh, which team is going to be placed in which group. I'm going to have some fun with that. And then uh, that group stage will start after that. So looking forward to that, guys. Definitely tune in tomorrow. As well as the It's Ghost Invitational. Um, so to wrap this up, guys, once again, I was breaking CBK. Joining me is Yori here. And as always, stay tuned to for much, much more coverage. See you guys tomorrow. The Cooler Master Honor Tournament $5,000 prize pool continues tomorrow. Take it easy.